Right. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this month's non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday, the 4th of April uh, from CMC Markets. My name is Michael Hewson, and I'll be taking you through um, some of the key levels that are on the charts that I'm actually looking at today um, in the wake of this non-farm payrolls webinar. First and foremost, I have to take you through a risk warning. That's um, required practice. Um, once, once I've got that out of the way, then we can crack on and have a look at the charts. Now, it's obviously, been an, there's been an awful lot of speculation, really, I think, about um, the, the outlook for the U.S. economy um, over the past three to four months. The U.S. Federal Reserve, um, at its last FOMC meeting, dropped its guidance threshold for um, the unemployment rate, which was 6.5%. Um, the consensus today, as you can see on the screen, is for a drop in the unemployment rate from 6.7 to 6.6%, an increase in non-farm payrolls from 175 to 200. So let's um, actually drill down into the detail for that because um, this is something that I do a fair bit with respect to the spreadsheets. So I look at a I look at an Excel chart of the of the various non-farm payroll numbers and um, the, his, the, the three-month average, which actually is is quite important. Now, you may recall that in October we had the debt ceiling debacle, and um, since then we've seen the U.S. economy start to slow down. Now, an awful lot of commentators have put that solely down to the very unseasonably cold weather that we've seen over the past three months. And, you know, there's, there's certainly an argument for that, certainly the December number of 84,000, uh, the January number of 129,000 has brought the three-month average um, for non-farm payrolls down quite considerably, particularly when you look at this three, three months here from 164 to 237 to 274. Then we saw a significant drop-off in December to 84,000. So obviously that was a bit of a disappointment. Since then, we've had a bit of a trough in payrolls data. This week's ADP number wasn't particularly um, enlightening in, in the context of um, this week's non-farm payrolls number. But I think one of the things that has been notable this week is that expectations for non-farm payrolls and the monthly number have actually gone up quite considerably. Now, the expectation here is in the March number is for around about 200,000. If we look at the same period last year, we saw 141. Um, and uh, 280 and 197. So we can see straight away on a three-month average, we're quite significantly below that. But obviously last winter in the US, not the one just gone and the one that they're currently experiencing was um, significantly milder. But I think there's also, there is also an underlying weakness in the US economy as shown by the retail sales numbers. Um, and and that's, that's borne out by this particular spreadsheet. Here we can see the retail sales numbers since October, November. It's been on a downward path. Yeah, we have seen a bit of a tick up in February. Consumer confidence has been rising all of that time since the uh, trough in, 2000, in November last year. But if you notice that while consumer confidence was rising, retail sales were falling. So, you know, there is a, slight, there is a significantly mixed picture, I think, for the U.S. economy at the moment. And certainly this week's trade numbers, which blew out to a $42 billion trade deficit for the month of February, do seem to suggest that Q1 um, is likely to come in near a 1% growth than 2% growth. You know, and I think that's particularly important uh, when you look at it in the context of the overall um, state of the U.S. economy. I think at some point we will get a pickup in U.S. jobs numbers. I just think that maybe um, March is too soon because when you actually look at the weather in March, okay, they haven't had any snowstorms, but average temperatures in March, March even, have still been very, very low. And, and the lowest they've been, I think, for the last 10 or 15 years. So I think expectations of a rise of 275,000, which are being touted in uh, some areas, from Deutsche Bank, for example, and also um, Societe Generale, I think maybe, maybe slightly optimistic. I'm certainly not expecting a number anywhere near that high. I'm expecting a number in the region of around about 189,000, 190,000. Having said that, I got last month wrong and the month before that, but 
c'est la vie. Um, unemployment rate is likely to um, decline, but again, um, I think that's really dependent on the U.S. participation rate, and the U.S. participation rate is just off a 35-year low. It's currently coming in around about 63% off 35 year low of 62.8. So again, need to keep an eye on the U.S. participation rate because I think if that starts to tick up at the same time as the unemployment rate starts to edge down, I think that's generally going to be positive for U.S. jobs growth going forward. So um, what I'm going to look at for the moment is the dollar yen because I think the dollar yen for the past two months has really given a good indication as to the way the markets are positioning with respect to the payrolls number. So the consensus is 200. I think if the market thinks we're going to get a good number, we could well see dollar yen start to um, push higher. Certainly the past two or three payrolls numbers, just before the numbers come out, dollar yen has shot up only to come back down again on the back of a disappointing number. So I think, I think what we've got to do is look at this in the context of what markets are expecting. Markets are expecting a number in excess of around 215 or 220, judging by some of the moves that we've seen so far this week. So I think even if we come in, come in on consensus, we could actually see an initial sell-off in the dollar. So let's, let's start with some of the charts that I'm looking at. And I'm going to start with um, a very dollar-centric theme here. I'm going to start with Dollar Canada and I'm going to tip my hat to my colleague Rick Spooner in Australia for this one because this is a really nice chart on the Dollar Canada. It's an hourly chart. We can see it here. Um, and there's quite a nice little triangular formation building up here. And I think, you know, if we get a move either side or a breakout of this particular triangle, we could see a strong move higher or lower. So I'll certainly be keeping an eye on this chart in the wake of the payrolls number. And we've also got to remember that it's also Canada payrolls day to day as well. So I think in that context, it could actually be significantly important given the fact that it's not only US payrolls day, it's Canada payrolls day. So it's certainly worth keeping an eye on Dollar Canada on the hourly chart because it's, because I think there's the potential for a very strong move one way or the other. And that's, I think that's important when it comes to triangles. You trade the breakout of the triangle. Um, trade in the direction of the breakout, and it should give you the move. And if, if you look at the apex of this particular triangle, we can see that from here. Starts at 110.90, comes down to around about 110. So we should get around about 100 basis, 100 point move, higher or lower, on the breakout of this particular triangle. Let's also look at the dollar index, because I think the dollar index can give us some fairly good indication as the overall longer term trend of the US dollar. So I'm going to pull my Bloomberg onto the screen here and um, have a look at the dollar index, because I think that's actually um, quite important. Over the, over the past couple of, couple of weeks, we've seen the dollar start to rebound somewhat. And two weeks ago, we saw what I would designate a bullish engulfing week. Um, which does seem to suggest that maybe the dollar has got room to push higher towards the highs of this year, around about 81.5. Now, what does that mean for Euro-Dollar? Well, given what Mr. Draghi has said this week, um, Mr. Draghi is definitely hoping for some very good U.S. economic data because it gets him out of a very large hole of his own making. Um, the last thing that the European Central Bank wants is a higher euro. Unfortunately, they lack the tools at the moment to do much about it. Um, so I certainly think after Janet Yellen's comments earlier this week, I think um, uh, she will have been crossed off Mario Draghi's Christmas card list after talking the dollar back down. But uh, certainly given the performance of the dollar index, that was very much a temporary, temporary factor in the case of um, the euro dollar. Why is the dollar index important? It's important in the context of the euro dollar because dollar index, 57% of it is euro. So we can see that here and we can see that we're approaching a very key level on euro dollar on the downside. We've got trend line support coming in from the July lows last year and we can see that as also the 100 day moving average. So we've got a double support coming in on the euro dollar round about 136.70, 136.80. So, so any dollar strength against the euro is likely to find 
some support around about the 100 day moving average and the trend line support from the lows last year in July at 127.80. So keep an eye on that line. That's, that's going to be significantly important in the event of a good non-farm payrolls number. Also, let's also look at um, dollar Swiss because I think that gives us an also a nice little indication here. And we're pushing against the highs that we saw from February, the end of February, around about 89.30, 89.40. So once again, a strong payrolls number should see this resistance level taken out. But we're pushing against it, and at the moment, what we really need to see is for us to close above it. But also look at the slow stochastic here. We're looking very overbought. Doesn't mean we can't go higher. We can certainly um, get a push higher towards the 90 level. Um, but uh, again, once again, we're approaching some key resistance levels on the US dollar. Now let's look at our old friend, dollar yen. Because dollar yen, again, we are just above 104, but again, um, it's really the 105.50 level that's really the key level for me on dollar yen. And the one thing that bothers me about this again is the fact that we've got what I would call a little bit of a bearish candle here on the dollar yen on the daily charts. Having said that, it's not really conclusive. It's very, very difficult to sort of ascertain whether or not this is just a little bit of a pause before we move back towards the 105 level. So let's try and see if we can get any clues with respect to uh, the US bond markets, because I certainly think the US bond markets can give clues to the overall direction of um, US yields. And there is a strong correlation between US bond prices, US bond yields, and dollar yen. When US bond yields edge higher, um, dollar yen tends to follow them. So there is an inverse correlation, lower bond prices, higher dollar yen. We're, we're on trend line support for bond prices from the lows that we saw in September last year. So once again, we're on a very key US dollar support level in terms of US bond prices and a resistance level when it comes to yields. And we can see that it's borne out on my Bloomberg chart here. If I just pull it across for you so that you can see it, I'll just do that now. One second, give me a moment, pull it across, and we can see that here. Candle chart. This level here is around about 282, 2.82%. Key resistance level, it's the highs in March. At the moment, we're struggling to push through it. So what we want to see is really for dollar yen to go up, we need to see higher bond, price, higher bond yields, lower bond prices. Also, keep an eye on gold in the wake of this number because I think gold will be very important as well. Gold is on a, has, been, has been on a key support level for um, quite some time. And we can see that from this particular daily chart here, as well as the oscillator. That's potentially quite a bullish reversal on the dailies. It is now starting to push higher. Let's look at a slightly shorter term chart on that. And again, gold is starting to ratchet higher ahead of these payrolls numbers. But again, I wouldn't read too much into that because markets tend to front run a lot of these numbers beforehand. So again, keep an eye on 1280, $1,280 an ounce on gold. We're starting to get a push higher in anticipation of that. What I want to see for the gold price is for us to move back above the 200 day moving average. That's really the key there. We can see that on previous days, over the past couple of days, the 200 day moving average has acted as resistance. And we can see that on this chart here, around about 1298, 1299. And on that day there, 20, 28th of March and on Monday. So we're pushing against the highs for this week on the gold price. So keep an eye on that. If we push back above 1300, I would anticipate um, a few stops getting cleared out through there. Keeping an eye on dollar yen, dollar yen, just a quick reminder that um, I, from the last two payrolls numbers that we've seen, we've seen dollar, dollar yen ramp higher and the markets generally tend to um, have generally tended to get that wrong. I think, there tends, I think there's a little bit of a reluctance on the part of the markets to try it third or fourth time in a row here. So we're starting to get a little bit twitchy ahead of the payrolls numbers. As I said, 
um, when I started, the payrolls numbers have probably lost an awful lot of their importance, but I certainly think in the context of um, this payrolls number, we'll still get a reaction. The key question is, will we get a reaction higher? Also, there's something before I do do this, quickly show you the S&P chart that I've got here. Look at this potential triangle breakout on the S&P. Are we going to go through 1900 and push on to 1930? Really need a, I think what we really need to see is a fairly positive payrolls number. But that, will, that really remains to be seen. Again, front running the number. Dolly Yen is starting to push higher. What a surprise. It's also predictable. Just before the payrolls numbers, 24 seconds to go, and we are getting a uh, ramp higher in Dolly Yen. So, as I said previously, quick summary, 220, 225 could be perceived as a good number. I think if we come in on expectations, we could actually see a bit of a sell-off. So let's see what's going to happen. I'll be quiet now and wait for the numbers to come out. Right, here we go, 192. And... 6.7%. So, and uh, revision upwards of 197. And again, it's a little bit of a disappointment. What a surprise. Buying it into the payrolls, and down we go on the back of it. So, again, it's a dis disappointment. I was expecting 189. We came in at 192. So, pretty much as expected, Deutsche Bank and Sokgen get it wrong again. And again, I think. It's, it's really, I think it was very, very premature to really think about a sharp jump in the payrolls number, given the fact that, um, you know, the average temperature in the U.S. was and has been at record lows, for the, well, not record lows, but the lowest levels it's been for 10 years. And, and we're really seeing that. We're, we're really seeing that being borne out in, this, in, the, in the price action that we've got here. So not really had any effect whatsoever on the S&P. We're still pushing higher. So once again, it's a negative dollar reaction, um, which means that the push higher in the gold price was um, a little bit, a little bit of a head of um, head of expectations. But uh, the revision higher in um, February is positive. But the fact that we've come in at 192, which is probably not that much different to expectations, means that the three-month average still remains at um, a fairly fairly low level. And as such, people are now going to start looking towards the numbers in April for evidence of a pickup. So we've got 192 here. We've got 197 here. It brings the three-month average up ever so slightly after that significant drop-off that we saw in December. Um, certainly, now that those numbers have dropped out of the equation, it's certainly an awful lot more healthy. And, and overall, apart from the 84 number, it's probably not that bad. Let's have a quick look at Dollar Canada on the back of, um, on the back of that um, chart that I showed you earlier. But it certainly does look like we're going to see 1900 on the S&P today. Um, you know, it's the good news is bad news. Bad news is good news is um, the, the usual story. The upward revision was obviously very positive, but it's not really. Uh, I think it's really taken some of this sting out of. Um, I think it's taken some of the sting out of the overall move, and we can see straight away. Look at that nice breakout. So again, sharp move lower should see a move down to around about 109, 109.30, 109 uh, on on the back of that, that 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 payrolls report there. So that would have been a nice move if you'd been able to take advantage of it. So U.S. unemployment rate um, ticks up to six, basically stays the same, 6.7% unchanged. Um, pretty neutral, really, payrolls report, um, despite the fact that um, we saw a fairly positive services ISM employment um, bounce back in March, which just goes to show just because one number tells you that you're going to get or gives you an indication that you're going to get a good U.S. employment report doesn't necessarily mean that you will do. Let's look at euro dollar. And again, we can see straight away it's been not significantly good enough to give us a significant uh, rebound sell-off in euro dollar. So again, the very key support level around about 136.70, 136.80. Um, while I'm here, um, is there anything in particular that any of you guys, ladies and gentlemen, want me to have a look at and 
basically give an opinion on that I haven't already covered because this is not just about me talking to you guys, it's also you guys feeding back to me. So is there any particular market that you want me to basically cast my eye over, give you an opinion on, um, do, some an do some analysis on? Um, please feel free to send me a message on the chat. It's fairly easy to do. Just, just, just send me a quick message uh, and, I, and I, will, uh, I will give you my, my tuppence worth on it. While, while, I'm, while I'm waiting for that, we'll also look at Australian dollar because um, next week is, um, could be a fairly important week for the Australian dollar. We've broken higher on the top side. We're finding resistance at 93. General consensus has been on the Aussie that we're going to, um, we're going to probably drift back lower. But certainly on the basis of these technical charts, that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm certainly not convinced that we can ratchet lower from here because we've, we've broken a number of key levels on the top side, which would seem to suggest that maybe we could actually have potential to go higher. All right, I've just been asked about the US 30. I'll, I'll have a look at that just after I've finished this. More than happy to do that. Um, is this here, guys, an upside down head and shoulders? We've got the left shoulder here. We've got the head here. We've got the right shoulder here. If that is the case, then if we measure this move here and project it higher, it brings us back to around about 95 or even 96 cents. The only way that I would reverse my potential move for a or my potential opinion for a move in the Australian dollar higher is if we drop back below this neckline here and the 200-day moving average. So at the moment, the Aussie is broken higher. We've had a number of commentators talk about it going back down again and coming back down to this trend line. Given the fact that if you acknowledge that this is an inverse head and shoulders and we do this, then there is certainly potential for us to ratchet back to these sorts of levels here, 95, 95.80, or even 96. So I think that's really the key level on the downside on the Aussie. Keep an eye on around about 91.80, 91.50. We drop below that, then we, we could potentially come back all the, way, all the way back lower. But certainly, if this is a upside down head and shoulders, which it certainly looks like from my perspective, then I certainly think um, we could well get a short squeeze in the Australian dollar. And it's certainly worth keeping an eye on in the short to medium term. Okay, so let's look at the US 30. We've made new, new all-time highs. We are very oversold on the daily slow stochastic. Um, but certainly looking at the momentum trade here, the momentum trade still appears to be fairly positive. I think the key level on the downside for me on the US 30 is around about 16,500. Um, certainly, if you equate that with the S&P as well, the fact that the S&P has broken out on the top side, then you've really got to think that there's potential for maybe more gains here on the US 30. Certainly on the daily chart, let's look at the four-hour chart, see if we can drill down into that even further. And we can see that certainly on this four-hour chart, we remain in a very, very strong uptrend, and therefore any dips are likely to find a, a fair degree of support around about 16,350, 16,400, certainly on the basis of this line. Certainly the momentum does appear fairly positive. Um, you've also got to take into account the fact that the S&P on the chart that I just showed you a few minutes ago um, does appear to have broken out to the top side. Um, on the daily chart, and that does seem to suggest to me, irrespective of what you think of the data, that the market wants to take this higher. So any dips on the S&P are likely to find a fair degree of support around about the base of this line here, which is around about 1880. Certainly a test of 1900 appears to be on the cards. If we measure this triangle higher here and project it from the breakout point, which is, which is essentially what we're talking about, then you're looking really at 1920 or 1930 over the course of the next few trading sessions. The only, the only caveat to that would be is if we drop back within this triangular consolidation, then we're probably going to come back all the way back to this lower line here. And as such, this would then be a false breakout. So it's certainly something to bear in mind in the short to medium term. Um, so, okay, so 
Um, NASDAQ, US NASDAQ, yep, I'll look at that for you. Let's look at the US NASDAQ 100. Looking at the safe chart on that, here we go. That looks to be as if it's starting to build up some form of topping pattern. But again, the neckline remains some way away. That's the weekly chart. Let's just drill down into that. We can see that there. Um, let's look at the trend line from the highs that we've seen in March. I suppose this feeds into the narrative as to whether or not we're seeing a bit of a tech bubble or a bit of a tech unwind. Let's look at the moving average. Let's look at the um, technicals. So looking at these studies, looking at my favorite slow stochastic. So one I use as a general rule. Again, that's that's actually looking that's looking as if we could well be. It's, it's buying on. I think it's buying on the dips at the moment. We've, we've certainly got resistance coming in around about um, three thousand seven hundred or just above that. We're in a little bit of no man's land at the moment. Let's drill down even further into the four hours. See if we can get any clues from that. Couple of peaks around about 36.70, 36.80, as designated by this chart here. So we can drill down into that. There we go. Let's let's drill down that all the way across. That's interesting. So 36.75, 37.80 looks a little bit toppy. Having said that, bit of an uptrend from the 24th, the week of the 24th of March, coming in there bit of a convergence coming in there. So I would suggest that if we break higher, we're going to run into this line here. If we break down, then we're certainly going to come in a little bit lower towards these lows here. Hopefully that helps. Um, just, done the, just done the Dow Jones. Um, do you want me to do it again? Quick question. It's the US 30, the Dow Jones. Would you like me to do that again, sir? Or um, did you, did you get, yeah, okay. More than happy to do the Dow Jones again. That's the US 30, so we talked about that a little bit earlier. There's the analysis on the four hour chart. Um, support around about 16,500. We can move that line down here in these series of lows here. It is looking a little bit oversold in the short to medium term. I think if the S&P is unable to get through 1900 today, and I think that is likely given the fact that we're coming into the weekend, we could see the Dow Jones start to drift back down um, after maybe a late squeeze in London, we may see a ramp into the London close. So we'll try and test the highs. But I think overall I would expect to see the market start to drift a little bit lower just because of caution heading into the weekend. Certainly I think there is an expectation. Now I think there is always a nervousness given what's going on in the Ukraine. And certainly there has been some chatter about um, U.S. intelligence saying that they are concerned about a Russian build-up. So I would be very reluctant to go into the weekend overly long of um, long equity markets simply because I think the risks certainly don't, the rewards don't outweigh the risks. Okay, guys, anything else that I haven't covered as yet? One thing I think is quite interesting is Brent crude. It's on a very, very key support level in the long term. And we can see that from the weekly chart here. So certainly keep an eye on a weekly close, 200 week moving average, but also this trend line support from the lows in 2009. We're right on it. So keep an eye on Brent because I certainly think that could actually give some indication as to what markets think about um, certainly growth, growth projections going forward as well as copper. Next week we've got some, some important Chinese data. Best performing sector today on the FTSE 100 has been basic resources on the back of that Chinese stimulus that was announced um, earlier this week. Key question for me is to whether or not Chinese inflation or deflation, whichever way you want to call it, Chinese inflation continues to fall and as to whether or not the Chinese trade balance next week either improves or actually gets worse. So keep an eye on the Chinese data next week. We've also got Bank of England day, Bank of England meeting next week. Not expecting too much from from that overall. Otherwise, um, I'm going to sign off this week. One thing I would say, we have got a couple of events coming up in April. There is a Forex seminar here um, at CMC Markets, which is on the 16th of April. You can sign up for that on our website. I'll be hosting it, basically looking at... Um, looking at some of the key 
the key indicators that I look at um, when I'm trying to predict where the markets are going to go, certainly in the context of currencies. And there's also a London Trader Network on the 23rd of April, which is again in the evening. So feel free, feel free to sign up for that. More than happy to host you here at CMC Markets. Um, one more question. What do you think? I think, yeah, good question. That I've been asked basically what I think the Dow will do when U.S. markets officially open. Um, I think what I think we may see a bit of a downward. I think we may see a bit of a downward push initially on the U.S. market or leading into the U.S. open. But I certainly think the market will want to try and test that 1900 level at some point during the trading day. Uh, but as I think as as we head into the open, I think the market, the U.S. traders will push the market lower initially before taking it higher. Hope that helps. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's it again for this week's non-farm, this week's, this month's non-farm payrolls webinar. I'll be posting it on YouTube. So if there's any bits that you wanted to listen over again, um, it will be going on YouTube over the weekend. You can have a listen to it, play back um, any bits that you might have missed. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for your company this month, and um, I'll speak to you all again in a month's time. If not, if you can't wait that long, um, I do a weekly webinar, or me and my colleague Jasper do a weekly webinar on a Monday at 12.15 every Monday. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys.